If you haven't done so already, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. Since we are being asked to calculate the electric field produced by a series of point charges, we're going to need to look at the formula for electric fields produced by point charges. And in this formula, we have E for the electric field. K is a constant that we will mention later. Q is the charge, and then R would be the distance. In this case, the distance would be from each charge to the center of this distribution right here at the origin. Now, since there are three charges present, we're going to have to perform this calculation three times, so let's set them up. Now, ordinarily, we would want to use subscripts to represent the different electric fields produced by different charges. For example, we might say E1, E2, and E3. And that's because in most circumstances, the different electric fields will have different values. But in this case, we'll notice that all three charges have the same value. They're all negative 5 microcoulombs. And in addition, they're all the same distance away from the origin here, from the center of the circle. Each one is two meters away from that center. So because all the charges are the same and all the distances are the same, we don't have to use subscripts to denote different electric fields. They're all going to have the same magnitude. So we can go ahead and plug in to each equation the charge just mentioned as well as the distance. K, we will see, is that constant. So here is the value of that constant, that is the K, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Also notice that the charge was given in microcoulombs, and so we need to convert that into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the negative 6th. We'll now pick up our calculators and crunch down these numbers. And all three electric fields turn out to have magnitudes of 1.12 times 10 to the 4th newtons per coulomb. We next want to consider the direction of each electric field. And to do that, we recall that on negative charges, electric field lines point towards those charges. If it were positive, the field lines would point away. But in this case, all the charges are negative, and we have to keep in mind, therefore, that the electric field vectors will point towards the negative charges. So, for example, if we were considering the electric field produced by this charge right here, we would have to draw a vector that points towards that charge. And similarly, for the other charges, we'll have to draw vectors that point towards them. Now, since electric fields are vectors, we have to add them in a very special way. We're going to have to break them into components, in fact. And before we do that, let's just remind ourselves that, according to the figure, this angle right here is 30 degrees. And this angle here turns out also to be 30 degrees, of course, because the one that they showed from here all the way to there is 150. And we know that on a straight line we have 180, so that has to make 30 degrees right here. With that in mind, we can now break the electric fields into their x and y components. So for the electric field that's pointing in this direction, we can extend a line in the positive x direction to represent the x component, and then we can also extend a line in the positive y direction to represent the y component. We'll put arrowheads on there to represent those components. The x component is adjacent to that 30 degree angle, so the magnitude of it will be e times the cosine of 30. And then the y component will be opposite to the 30 degree angle, and therefore it will be e times the sine of 30. Over to this electric field, we have an x component as well as a y component. And actually, the x component and y component are going to turn out to have the same magnitudes because there's also a 30 degree angle. Note that the x component here is actually negative e times the cosine of 30. Negative, of course, because it's pointing to the left, whereas the y component is pointing straight up, so it's still positive e times the sine of 30. For the third electric field, we have only a y component because it's pointing exclusively along the y axis, so there is no x component. We should note, however, that because it's pointing straight down the y axis, that its value will actually be negative e. So that would represent the y component of that vector, and again, there is no x component. We can now sum all these components into a table. So in this case, we have used E1, E2, and E3 to represent this electric field, this electric field, and the third electric field. Now what we do is we add them up to get the total x component and the total y component. But what's interesting here is that if we add E cos 30 and negative E cos 30, they would cancel out. And so the total x component is 0. Now also interestingly is the following. The sine of 30, if you type that into your calculator, is actually 1 half which means that we can actually write this y component as 1 half times e. And then the same thing would be true of this other y component for e2. Now what's interesting is if we sum up the y components, we're going to have half of an e plus half of an e minus 1e. E. That also comes out to 0. 
So since the X and the Y components are both zero, it turns out that the total electric field at the center of this charge distribution is zero newtons per coulomb. In a sense, we didn't even have to earlier calculate the magnitude. You remember that we calculated it to be something like 1.12 times 10 to the fourth, but that didn't matter because effectively all three of the electric field vectors cancel each other out. And so indeed the final answer is zero newtons per coulomb. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen.